Welcome to the Investor Impact, Power Talks with Vinny Chopra, where investors gather to share their insights and strategies in the world of multifamily, real estate, and beyond. Get ready to be inspired and equipped for your next level of success. Hi friends, this is Vinny Chopra from here in Danville, California. And you might be saying, hey Vinny, what are these over here? You know, I wrote this book a few years back, Apartment Syndication Made Easy, it became top seller. I came from India with $7 in my pocket. It says 500 million, it's gonna be 1 billion very soon, very soon. I'm right at about 850, 900 million and then I'm ready for the next billion, actually. You will see that happening, two billion in this book also. The other book I wrote, which has been a very big positivity, has been my life. Always, always, I've been married 43 years with two children, and the beauty is to be positive, the mindset that can take you to all the places in the world. And that's the book that also became big, big seller. My third book, Senior Assisted Living is coming. So do yourself a favor, go ahead and click the link below to get free copies, audio copies of these books, even printed copies of these books. If you, I mean printed means digital, if you can't afford it, but I would highly recommend for you to get these or go to amazon.com. Just go to Amazon. I got it in soft cover, in hard cover, in Kindle, in audio, also the Spanish version of this. Oh, this book also. So let's crush it, guys. I know you can be successful. I know you can do the kind of things that you want to do in life and have the streams of income and know how to really, you know, educate yourself so that you could become a strong, strong force in this world in real estate. I know you can. So take that step. Don't just be on the sideline. Take charge of your life. Take charge of your education. And he himself is going ahead and asking me if I may share my screen. Please do. Excellent. See, that's the beauty of mastermind, you know, collaborating. So I think, you know what, if I were, you gave him some number. I remember you said 73,000 or we were going to go to 100 maximum. But let's sit on it because the more you stay back, the more he's going to say, oh my gosh, Saurabh is the only interested party in the property. So his terms will change. Yeah, yeah. He's go down. Yeah. yeah. But I should wait for him? I would say, so, sir. You don't want to be pushy. This, it's not going anywhere, right? Even if somebody gets it and pays more, so what? But the yeah. thing is, I remember now what you showed me, your friend is managing it and the numbers he's showing you, the real numbers are pretty attractive numbers and it's worth 1.7 or 1.8 million with the new numbers you only showed me August, I think, and September. But this time it's not worth that. And he's trying to get the money which will be worth a year from now with this new management company. So he, there is a compromise. Huh? This is a compromise and he needs to come to the grips of it. Hey, this property is not worth that much. Whatever appraisal he did, yeah, that's no good. Appraisals are good for 90 days. <laughs> so you say, hey, do an appraisal now with whatever you have occupancy and everything. It's not going to... So this year, yeah, that's the one I remember. Yeah, look at yeah. that. In August, it was with the new numbers, it was 1.4-ish. But in September, it came back down to 1.2 because they did not make uh, enough cash flow. Yeah. So it was like 800 bucks for all those properties combined. Plus, he has these amount of taxes due, which he has not paid for. Oh, wow. Yes, I remember. And I spoke with him like on a phone call, like on a video call as well. I gave him all the details. But basically, what he is asking for is so first of all he's saying that taxes can be paid for one more year so that should be fine okay mm -hmm. but he's okay he himself is saying i have an acute need of cash for the winter here if you know anyone in your network who is looking to do some private lending i'm but only comfortable with sharing because he's not doing that great in terms of not at all not at all you don't want to give somebody who's thinking and or private lending with promissory note or anything guaranteeing because he may never pay back. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
So he's he said that he's looking for 250k. I'm fixed. Exactly. I wanted some more information about him. Like I'm not gonna lend to him, but mm -hmm. he's looking to for this deal as to what, what is his requirement. So after that, he said after 250k, he actually came down. Really need something to get through the winter for his huh. business, right? So short term isn't off the table, but longer the better. Interest only preferred, right? Mm. So which is a red flag. And then could secure it with the six unit building sooner the better. Anywhere between 200k to 350k is what they're asking. So if he's asking for 200k, I know I can get probably the deal. For this particular building at 175-ish K, because he's asking his low end is 200 K and he's telling it to me, which means... Yeah, but he wanted before 200 and 200, I thought, right? Or something? Or I 400 think. and 400. What was that? 200 now, 200 later. But then I told him that's not going to happen because your property is not worth it. Gotcha. So are you taking over the loan, Saurabh, or how is it helping? Yeah, so I'm thinking that I take over the loan, the 1.2 mm -hmm. million, right? 1.22 million is the loan that they have. Mm -hmm. If I can get this, right? These are the 30 units. If I can even get it for 1.45, right? Yeah. Or actually a little bit lesser. Uh, I did some quick math somewhere away. I love your Excel sheets and you are master at it. You can... Design and do so much projection so quickly. Yeah. It's not very uh, clean right now. But I'll just quickly explain. Balance on the mortgage, right? 1.2 million. We mm -hmm. think that his LTV back then was 25%, right? So this is what the bank valued the building at in 1.63 million two year, two, two and a half years ago, right? It's Got it. NOI was still negative even back then. Oh. Because they've been using the same exact management company. So we know that even if we go to the credit union right now, they should be able to give at least two years uh, old value, right? This is the property value that I've come up with this 25% equity. And, and then if we get each building, so there are five sixplexes, right? G is asking for 310000 Per six plagues, which converts to 1.55 million, right? Now, no, uh, six. You said six of them, right? Six times three is 18. Five, six, five, five six plexes. Oh, five, five. Okay, got it. Yeah, five of them. He's asking for 310k per six plagues, which converts to 1.55k million, right? Mm. And which means I need to give him 326k in down payment, which I'm not going to do, which gives me an equity right now. If we have the same exact property value that was valued by the credit union two years ago, it gives me an 81k equity, which is not that great. But I'm saying that I'm going to give you 280k per six plex, which converts to 1.4 million value which means I need to give you 176k instead of the 200k that you're asking for, right? Which converts to my equity would be 30, 231. Yeah. So this is what I'm thinking right now. But I need to wait for this guy to come back to me. I can't like go and say that, hey, like I'm ready. And the only trouble I have is that the raised value you're taking two years back and the market has gone downhill with the interest rates where they are. And even though it's a fixed loan, I think. And um, what's the percentage of the loan on this one? 3.7 percentage. When is it expiring? December 2026. Oh, 2026. So it's coming up here in two years. Two years almost. Yeah, two years. Which you will be able to do very well and refinance it, which is good. But I'm just having, he's stuck with that valuation. How much will it cost if, you know, your friend maybe knows some appraiser to do the real appraisal of this property and put it in his face? <laughs> you pay for it. Maybe it's a $750 or whatever. But if you're really interested in going further, 
now that appraisal is going to really change his totally mind. I'm telling you. What about if the appraisal actually comes back at 1.6 million? Say, hi- yeah, higher. Yeah. You no, know, it's good for you to know that too. I like it. I would rather I get an appraisal which comes to 1.631 to be truthful. I just don't want to take this two years back appraisal. What my thinking is, you're looking at millions of dollars of the asset. So it's well worth to do the appraisal, I, I would say, if you're that interested in it. But and the thing I like is that your friend is going to be managing it who is local and he is going to take care of you. You'll pay him good commission per month, but he will not give you wrong information. So that's something I like. I wouldn't like this property if you didn't have that element in it. You're in San Francisco. This is in Fargo, North Dakota. And how many times you want to fly there? How many times? Things just don't work out unless you have a good property management company. Very good. We did well in Knoxville property because of property management company and the right manager. What? Mm-hmm. Monica and I were discussing that. We bought for 12.5, sold for 17.4 in just two, and eight, two years, two and a half years. It was totally their hard work, not ours. We used to meet only 10 minutes a week, by the way. Mm-hmm. 10 minutes, 1 o'clock, one ten, meeting adjourned on the Zoom. Totally done. 10 minutes. She would have everything laid out. Everything and bumps. And she was the only manager and the leaser, by the way. She was that good for 107 units. Anyway, but I'm just saying that. I think I like the fact your uh, f- friend is involved and he's a, but then it just tells me, I will say wait until October. Maybe those September numbers were very poor. October might be even poorer. And then November might be even more purer because Christmas time and all. Question is, Sarab, so with all of this, how, what's your plan to stabilize the property? Mm-hmm. You. Yeah, great question, Ricardo. I would say, like, the idea is currently there are some vacancies in here. Yeah. So as you can see, there are some vacancies in here. We can fill this up. Currently, it's at 84%. Anything above 90% should be good enough for them. This is one idea. Plus, even the rents currently are a little bit underrated right now. So those rents are going to get, yeah, so these leases are going to end. Once these leases keep ending, they're going to keep increasing the rents. And even the management has changed from the previous management, which had a lot of expenses to the new management. So that is also going to help increase the NOI. So that's the idea. Reduce the expenses, increase the income and increase the NOI. Beautiful, beautiful. Awesome. Good. So me, what it is, get an appraisal done from a, from the same credit union that loaned to him and then get that number and whatever the number comes, even if it is at a higher number, we can negotiate based on cash flow. But we can say that, hey, like the cash flow is going to be still negative, so we can't pay so much. So we should do something like that because I've run the cash flow numbers as well over here, right? Uh-huh. As you can see, even if we take capital expenditure, I've made the asset management fee zero, right? And if I'm giving them 1.4 million with something in down payment, let's say 15% in down payment, which is 200K, right? 13% in down payment, yeah. So the cash flow, cash and cash return is zero. So I can say that I'm not making any money right now. From <laughs> No, so this is the P, this is the max that I can give you. And what mm-hmm. is remaining is my equity, something like that. Love it. Love it. What you're doing is so great. I think as we are doing case study, is it okay if I could share? And this will really help a lot also, all of us at the meeting. What we look for, right? For the property. So boy, stop letting me. What happened here? Did it come on? Okay. <laughs> Oh, okay, I'm cut. Should I wait for this person or should I like say it? Because he needs the money right now. Like he's saying that he's he's looking for different options right now. 
if he signals funding, then this deal is gone. And he's for it for the winter because that's when his second business is needs needs some cash to get. To now, what is his second business? Did you ask him? It's like some bounty hunter or something. But he has been watched. <laughs> I know. He's trying to get money from you from this to put into another sinking ship, maybe. I don't know. Okay, this is the party rent. Games galore, party rental. Oh, games galore, party rental. And maybe because of the holiday season, it's the high time for him to make rental money. Yeah. Or with the kids. For the kids and things like that. So that's his business. Wow. Okay, got it. Incredible, you know? I, I think you should wait him out because he's desperate and yeah. get the terms that you want. Wait him out yeah. until he's desperate. Make sure that he, whatever term, it's on your term because he's desperate. So true. So true. That's what I would say. Wait a little bit. Don't talk to him. Let him call you again. Maybe in a week's time, he'll call you and then you could converse back up again. And if he finds some, de- some source of funding, meanwhile, because yeah. it's winter already, it's almost there. We're already in October and ninth, and I know he's looking for different things. I know many times we think that everything should go up to the deadlines and all that, but many times we lose it if we are too fast. I have come to know that. I know one, one deal I bought in Albion Apartments. It took me three and a half months, three and a half months to even put the NOI that got accepted. And it was because that the sellers had high expectations and uh, Marcus and Melitiap had told them this is worth this much, the property. And I was coming low balling it. Whenever I would send an NOI with a deadline, they never responded it. So, so I'm saying that because patience is the virtue. And I was able to get it at a good price, 191 units, 192 units, I think, or something like that. And we sold it at a much higher price. If we have a little bit of time right now, let's go here to sharing the screen. I just wanted to bring the this mode right here. And Pramod is the guy who I coached him. He reached out to me about a year back, one-on-one coaching. I do that also. Yeah. Let's see. Can you hear it? Let's see here. Probably not. It's right there. Share the computer sound. Okay. Are you there? Okay. Let's listen to it. I'm very excited fast to have now. a great friend and a hu- great human being. Pramod Singh is here in the studio with me. And we're going to talk about his successes. He and I came to know about a year back, maybe a year back for both, right? And you had been doing Airbnb and also flipping homes, renovating, and you really wanted to get into multifamily. And I was so impressed how much desire you had and how much work it takes, how great all those things were. And then you were able to move the needle, I remember. You were just every week progressing like crazy. I said, he's going to be a superstar. And you have proven that way. Yeah. So congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Tell me more about, so you're in the Chicago area. Yeah. Yeah. So a little background on myself. So my name is Pramod Singh and I'm based out of Chicago, north side of Chicago, about 35 miles from the downtown area. And I'm a local investor, I call it myself. So I'm not out of state. I try to invest within 30 or 40 miles radius from where I live because um, I still have two growing children and I have a very exhaustive W-2 job that I I have to spend a lot of time into. With a little time, I still consider real estate as my side hustle, which I want to I want to make it my real story and go full time into real estate and quit my corporate career which is going to be truly my american dream <laughs> at the yeah. where i am i'm about 48 now and then i just wanted to retire before i hit 50 so yes yes i'm really <laughs> excited <laughs> and to be on your podcast and, and sir, because i i know you for more than a year now and since then i see a drastic change in my 
my approach of how I used to look at real estate before and how you energized me to to show the path that any real estate, small or big, right? It the mindset and your attitude that will probably be more um, more important to get any success and not by the yeah. size of the real estate. So that was some, I would have not believed that I would be able to pull through some of the bigger deals, the one that we are currently doing. So thank you. Yeah. No, you. thanks to you. You were so good in underwriting. You were so good in looking at projections and you had really done some really good business plan. That impressed me so much because, and you did it with seller financing with the interest rates being so high. In this market, you were able to harness all the special techniques to get that. So share about that, the multifamily. Of course, you also did before that some Airbnb homes. I was so impressed how you bought them. Maybe let's talk a little bit about the Airbnb. Then we talk about this beautiful monthly family with value add that you're making it a beautiful thing. Yeah. So right now, currently we have, I invested with my partner. I have my own two Airbnb and one with my partner. So there are total three that we manage in house. And the way I used to look at the real estate is that with little money that I can invest in and I can really raise the value by adding value to the property and then increasing the cash flow drastically. So I used to buy houses which were between three bedroom, one bathroom, three bedroom, two bathroom, mid-size single family homes, or sometimes it was a duplex uh, and very rarely some triplex, triplexes. And I used to rehab them well and put some money to, to make it look nice and rent it for a little higher uh, rent than my comps, my competitive. And in the area where there, there are a lot of demands for blue collar uh, people, it's somewhere in a C plus area or C minus areas, C plus C minus areas, which is right in my backyard. So that was a, yep. a great area. And when I started investing in there, so I realized that there are not just the opportunity for the long term, but also for some kind of mid term and short term, just because I live in a place which is very close to a naval base and that because of that, there are a lot of people who, kids who get graduated from the Navy graduation and then they celebrate it and they want their families to be flying in and celebrated with them. So for that, with that it can basically open up an opportunity for bigger size homes where a family mm -hmm. come and celebrate the, it's a big milestone for every individual and the kids. So 80% of our customers are those people who are booking just for the Navy graduation. So as long as you, if you, if you are close to that, that boot camp, it's a good market to be in. So I started looking into some of the properties in that area where the city was allowing Airbnb. And with that, I was able to find some of market properties at much cheaper rate than the real comp were. And I, I really did. Good rehab, so that it is very good rehabs. I should say that. Oh my gosh. I don't know if you have some pictures. I would love to I, audience I, I to do see. So. Huh? Yeah. So we that. Well, that to you. And then so two Airbnbs that we did, I did actually after refinance everything. I have zero dollar invested now. It's not even, it's not even a single penny that is invested. Everything got, I was able to cash out. I am leaving 25% or 30% equity on the property, right? And plus these, these houses are going for a monthly gross income on, not income, I would say, but the gross revenue. I revenue? About 7,000 a month, six to 7,000 a month. So on these properties are, yeah, so about 80, 84, 85 K per year projection. So 50% expense and PITI, excluding everything is still very good mm -hmm. cash flow with zero dollar investing. So I consider this is ah. a product. Congratulations. Yes, definitely. Sir. And also with the time, the value of the home is going to increase. Not only you're going to make cash flow, which you're yeah. going to get every month or every year, but the value will increase. Value will increase. I'm paying to see the principal right. Right. all of yeah. that. So yeah, these are all added which I'm not even considering, but yes, yeah. so far it's a very favorable investment for me. I know on those two. Now, 
Can you do cost segregation? Because I, I interviewed yesterday my very good friend. He's the CEO and president of Core Solutions. It's a cost segregation company. They yeah. have seen $2 billion in taxes with a yeah. B, billion. Right. And they've done my apartment studies too. Right. But I was wondering if Airbnb be homes because right. you're putting so much renovation dollars right. and also furnishings. Yes. Maybe yes. there is a room to do cost seg. Absolutely. That's an Absolutely. idea. Absolutely. And that was the reason why I asked my wife to become a real estate agent so that... Mm -hmm. W2, mm -hmm. a high paying W2 uh, employee income plus a real estate on the side, right? We come into the bracket of higher tax paying, yes. right? Yes. And uh, you cannot commingle the things between your mm -hmm. and real estate unless until you either 8,000, 8, 800 hours in a 750, 750, 750 or 800, yeah. 800 hours you yeah. spend or you become a real estate agent or you do this. Yes. Right, so these are the only three, three with which you can probably uh, you can save yes. a lot of huge money because yes. then you can almost with your negatives value. from the depreciation and everything you could combine them with your W two income because exactly. as a household, if your right. husband wife and wife is the real estate professional, you right. both file yes. taxes together. You consider as real estate professional. Right. So that's that's where. Yeah, that's what our plan is. So that's how we are going to, I, I sit with my account. Right. I just go do that. <laughs> cost segregation, the properties. Um, yes. And with with the vehicle and stuff, like 650 pounds or something more than that. Yes, yes. So yes. you can write it up, right? Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, maybe one day you'll buy a plane. You could write <laughs> off the <laughs> Probably, why would I wait to for buy for myself? I would probably you know, fly with you in your own <laughs> You know, real estate is amazing. And it, it's recording this in 2024, October, with the 50 basis points cut recently. And tomorrow, I think we'll find out with the CPI report also how the interest rates will take. But I think Fed is looking for a soft landing. And the right. soft landing will be to cut 0.25 several times. I right. think those good days are coming back again, coming which back I again. love it because three years, it has been a very tough year in the most very family, tough year. Yeah. very tough year. And I but believe in these three years, if your number has been working, going forward, it definitely will. Oh, it will work. It will totally work. If you're just conservative in yes. our projections, assumptions. And don't expect too high increases in rents. Yes, exactly. But I right. think the properties, some of the properties which are in foreclosures and things like that, I'm already seeing. I had two properties come today, eight million dollar cut down slap. Yes. Mm -hmm. The selling price, eight million dollars. That really blew me away. Oh then I'm looking at one over there in Nashville townhouses, beautiful townhouses. And they have reduced the price also. So there are certain people who are in a jeopardy of selling. But yeah. then there are other people who are ready to buy. I think yeah. it's time now. You yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yes. Absolutely. So fantastic. Let me ask you about this seller financing deal. Yeah, that's you were able to buy for almost zero money down. You are a master at it. <laughs> Yeah, so it was back in um, December 2023, I got this off market. A broker reached out to me and he presented this deal to me and he said that this is these are 78 unit in a university town, which is Urbana, which is about two and a half hours from where I live. Mm -hmm. and I know that area because most of my friends or even my seniors, colleagues, their kids have been to either that university or mm -hmm. they are planning to go. And a lot of Asian community, a lot of even white American and every part of graphic, yeah. yeah. Graphics, they come from all the places. So it's about 50,000 capacity. Yes. Yeah, she said. That's an enrollment. That's huge. That's yeah, huge. that's huge. Uh, yeah. It's huge campus there. Uh, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, I think I hope you got something out of it, guys. If you did, there was the guy on refinancing companies and he was there. I had to catch that. But uh, anything else he talked about here or 
you could just say, continue like that. So we took over anything. the mortgage from right there. And there so was he about took over the mortgage, something guys. was his personal money or his private money for 400,000. So we took so over took everything and we said that, okay, so I'll continue to pay you your monthly mortgage and we will rehab these units and we will rent it. We'll start collecting the rents and mm -hmm. we will close. The, the final closing will happen in April of 2027 or before. So, so twenty seven time before. I have I I am just taking this property and taking it for a ride. I'm just trying to make sure the property is rehabbed and it is rented yes. rented nicely to a better community and then yeah. a higher rent as well. Again, <laughs> if you do a better rehab, yeah. tenants will come and pay a little more. And sure. So that's the Go idea and what we are working on right now. Perfect. Then we go over all the renovations. We had to work in everything. Total using no insurance is cost. That was everything. The one. You've cut down and the cost. All of a sudden, that and company is... Just is, to let you know, he's estimated by the seller was $6,000 to $7,500 a door. Guess how much he spent? $2,220 per door so far. The guy is genius. He's just done all renovation. Under $200,000. This is mind-blowing to me, literally. And it's the units are, he's going to show me pictures and all that stuff. But anyway, what I talk about towards the end of the interview is that he bought it for only three. It'd be worth six and a half million. In just two years. Four and more. So that is a remarkable story, remarkable story. I just wanted to share that. And the beauty is we talked about, again, it just goes into all that. So we'll just wrap it up. That's all for this episode of The Investor Impact. Stay tuned for the next episode and don't miss out on the opportunity to learn and grow alongside this powerful inner circle.